We are in the fifth week of the Lenten journey. Approximately, we have some few days more to end our Lenten journey of 40 days. And let me now add 40 nights. This journey began on Ash Wednesday, and already we have been helped with aids for the Lenten journey. Prayer, fasting, and doing good. I'm just going to recall it. But today, now that we are just a week away from Palm Sunday, another week away from the Easter season itself, the Easter Sunday, we have come face to face with what it is like to be in Easter. And this is why today's first reading from the book of Jeremiah, the prophet, would already talk about the days to come, the future. No wonder we hear in the first lines of the, gas, the reading, that says the Lord, I will... It's a future tense. Talking about the new kingdom to come. So God is talking about this kingdom with the lips of Jeremiah. My dear friend, Jeremiah was born to Israel as a prophet. But we know that for 40 years of his life as a minister of God, a prophet, his work seemed a failure. People thought he was not successful because already materially he wasn't a successful man. But most importantly, his words were not adhered to. He spoke, no one listened. Even his family, friends, neighbors, everybody, they didn't listen to him. But he never ceased to still speak the truth. And this is why today, when he spoke, his tone changed, actually. He was, whenever he speaks, he was speaking about doom, punishment. He was talking about tragedy. But today he speaks with hope. That time, time will come when things will be different, and he puts them beautifully. Let's listen to the words again. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So this new covenant is supposed to be different from the old one. Because in the old covenant, God had written the laws on a tablet, the Ten Commandments, you call them and giving it to the people, but they couldn't keep them because they were in notebooks, because they were in textbooks, so to say. They couldn't just keep them. But in this new covenant, he says, I'm not going to put them on paper for you. I'm not going to put them in the pages for you, but rather on your heart. Straight away, the message is there. This new covenant calls for a personal relationship. Think of the things that come from the heart. Just think about them. What things we keep in our hearts? What things do we keep to their heart? And what things come from it? They tend to for personal relationship. So in this new covenant, which we are living in now by the grace of God, it calls for a personal relationship. So my dear friends, sisters, brothers, as we journey to the end of the Lenten season already, we are being reminded to have that personal relationship with God. It's not supposed to be written there in the Gospels, in the Bibles, but on our hearts. Because God wants now a personal relationship. He wants us to move from, think, think of him as a man printed in the letters of the Bibles, but a man printed in our hearts. And this personal relationship is so deep. In the gospel, we hear how these men came from nowhere to say, we wish to see Jesus. That is the beginning of that personal relationship. Because Jesus had been preaching in their towns and villages. They had been seeing him walk around, and yet they saw him as somebody who was just passing by. Indeed, for some of us, Jesus always passes by. He preaches in front of our houses. He preaches in our churches, and yet he's still passing by. But these Greeks in the gospel, we are told, when they heard Jesus pass by, speak, preach, they thought to themselves, let us go and see him. We wish to see Jesus. Volumus Jesum videre. You know, the Greek is more, more, more beautiful because the scene there in which you see Jesus is more than the normal scene of looking at somebody. But it means seeing beyond a double scene, a deeper scene. So these men and women who came to ask for, we wish to see Jesus were asked for something more intimate. Back to the first within, personal relationship. So these lines of having personal relationship are all intertwined from verse, the first reading through to the gospel. That as we get closer, let us learn to see Jesus. How we pray, 
how we wish that we can all cry, I wish to see Jesus. It takes only someone who wants to make a personal relationship to make that statement. I wish to see Jesus. It's so personal, a statement that you have to mean it to say it. As you continue our Lenten journey, we pray that these men who came from nowhere, the Greeks, to say we wish to see Jesus, and these women who came from nowhere to say we wish to see Jesus, we here in this chapel will make these words our words and can say that indeed we wish to see Jesus. Many years ago, when Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II, once preached to a group of young people, after preaching to them, the people could not, but were shouting for about 10 minutes continuously, we want God. We want God. We want God. You see, the human heart is said that nothing can satisfy it unless God. You have a friend of Augustine saying that our hearts are restless until they rest in, in God. The only thing that can satisfy our hearts is God. Not what we are seeing here, not what we possess. It is only God who can satisfy us. May this yearning to see Jesus personally, may this yearning to follow Jesus personally, may this yearning to have Jesus with us personally be our own contemplation, our own yearning. And we pray that with a few days left for the Lenten journey, we shall go back to our prayers, our fastings, and our doing good, the almsgiving, in order to have this personal relationship with God. Indeed, we wish to see Jesus. And don't forget, when they said this, Jesus told them what they needed to hear, that he came for them. We thank God that Jesus came for you. Jesus came for me. May Jesus, who has come for us, Give us the desire to yearn always to see him, to yearn always to wish to be with him. Amen.